Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ballroom. Marty McFly bringing you guys the horror and this cross, which I'm going to be sleeping with for the foreseeable future. Just got a Terrifier 3. Where do I start? If you like 1 and 2, you're going to love 3. Terrifier 3 lives up to the hype, lives up to its name. It's cruel, it's sadistic, it's violent, it's mean-spirited, it's sexually violent, which when you see the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is, it's living up to the hype. If you're not familiar with the Terrifier series, features the very mean and charismatic Art the Clown. Where does that start? It goes all the way back to the Ninth Circle, which was kind of like the test phase for Damon Leone, who's a pretty popular independent horror director at this point. And I really feel like these movies are bringing independent horror more to the mainstream, especially with this one, the biggest release out of the other two. It broke all the records. But Art the Clown, starting with The Ninth Circle, moving on to Terrifier, and then the anthology horror series All Hallows Eve, moving on to Terrifier 2. Now we have Terrifier 3, which is making critical acclaim. It beat Joker out of the, you know, essentially out of the office, or chopped them in half, whichever one Art did this time. Basically, there's one clown in town, and that's coming down to Art the Clown at this point. So I just got out of Terrifier 3. I feel like I need a shower, followed by another shower, followed by, like, I need to call my mom. I need to, like, go to church a couple more times. I need to go, like, hug someone's dog. If you have pictures of dogs, send me your dog. Maybe your dog can tell me everything's going to be okay. <laughs> the movie is just, wow. I can't believe they did that in a horror movie. It is gory. If you're a gore hound, you're going to love 3. I'm not the biggest gore guy on the planet, I'm not gonna lie, but this is this next generation's saw. It's the next generation's hostile. They push and break every boundary you can possibly do in a horror film, and this is it. The pros of this movie, you know, like, let's just even go back before that. I liked Terrifier 1. I mean, is it's a gore fest, and I'm not a big gore guy, I'll, but Terrifier 1 was the first movie in a long time that genuinely made me feel claustrophobic and scared. And like the things that I do on everyday life could eventually turn into that's that's how I felt like I couldn't escape Art the Clown in this movie and it was gut-wrenching and I feel like that's why Terrifier 1 was such an impact it's a short movie when it was over I was glad it was over because I was like good I'm, I'm not I'm away I'm, I'm I can escape this movie like how terrifying it is and I feel like that was what they did with Terrifier 1 I haven't felt those feelings in a horror movie since like you know, Hellraiser, the original Hellraiser, gave me that claustrophobia feeling. Sinister 1 and 2 gave me that just, I need to sleep with the lights on for a couple days. And that is exactly how those movies made me feel. And I feel like Terrifier 1 did a great job of that. Terrifier 2 is actually more of a cinematic experience. And they actually give you more characters that you care about. There's characters you care about in 1, and you're really sad when Damon Leone, George R. R. Martin's everybody. But I feel like 2, they really go for... The spirit of like these people and I love that it's set on the Halloween season you feel like it's an Halloween it doesn't look like it was directed in spring or summer in California it feels like it's a Halloween movie it's grindhousey it's got that you know that grimy filter on it it is everything that you kind of want in a horror movie two is the first time you're like wow we have a story and we actually have characters that we really really care about of course heralded by uh, Sienna Shaw who is Lauren Lavera and her brother Jonathan in these movies you really care about them you care about their friends which is not something we get a lot in horror movies, you know, it's not like, Shelly's dead! From Friday the 13th, part three. <sighs> Great, perfect acting, by the way. Friday the 13th, part three, Shelly's dead, oh, perfect. And the most lackadaisical Jason I think we've ever seen, just walking with the crossbow. Anyway, and everyone goes, bye! So, Terrifier 2, they bring in these characters that you really care about, you care about their friends, their friends actually don't suck, you care about their family members, and, then Damien the only George R. R. Martin's everyone you essentially care about, and that, you know, I think what I like about 1 and 2 is they're completed movies, and they're, the watchability, I feel like, is a little bit higher. Now we go into Terrifier 3. I'm not going to give too many spoilers here. I, I don't, if you haven't seen the movie, just go see the movie. You're going to end up with nightmares like me. You might as well join the club, right? And carry one of these with you, I guess. But Terrifier 3, they really captured the essence of the 90s Christmas spirit, which I thought was pretty cool. Like... It's cold outside, but you got the warm house. You got a lot of like the 90s decor. You got the malls when we used to be excited to go to the malls at Christmas time with a lot of like the luscious decorations and everything. They really capture that essence. Like, oh man, I actually kind of like that. I miss those days in the 90s. And then Art the Clown just basically just cuts all of that in half. And Terrifier 3, 
I feel like doesn't have the watchability of one and two. Like I saw it once and I'm like, cool, I never need to do that ever again for as long as I live. I've never been a big gore guy, never will be. If you're a gore person, you like practical effects, this movie's for you. This is like Tom Savini's wet dream, basically this movie. And they actually did get a bunch of really famous people to go in and do this movie. Again, you care about the characters though, and I feel like you care about the characters a little bit more. Uh, Sienna, Jonathan, and everyone else that's a part of this movie. Like, you really do care about everybody. And uh, then they all horribly get mangled. And like I said, it's a cruel film. It's a cruel, mean movie. And the first 10 minutes alone really sets the stage for how the rest of the movie is essentially going to be. And, <laughs> you know, we had some kids in our, in our movie that really should not have been there. I mean, 13, 14 years old. I mean, you should not be in this movie. It's supposed to be 18 now, but clearly the movie theater didn't care. But you have like these like 15 kids on the right all speaking to each other in Brazilian Portuguese. And they have their phones out, their flashlights out. And the, finally the movie starts and they all, after three minutes in the movie, they all finally shut up because, you know, well, they're going around killing a bunch of people. <laughs> and the first 10 minutes really sets the stage for what the rest of this movie really entails and wow it lived up to the hype yes it did the first 10 minutes the sound effects alone were terrifying to me and you don't even need to show the gore the sound effects alone and just the feelings of how they set the stage for the first 10 minutes you forgot that art was kind of funny and charismatic with the sunglasses uh-uh not in the first 10 minutes it's it lives up to the hype if you want to go see us just go see it don't uh just go see it before someone spoils it for you, but the gore factor is cranked to 10. No, it's more like 11. It's definitely 11 out of 10. But I would say the chill factor, you know, no pun intended with the Christmas season, but they took like when you, a holiday when you feel most comfortable and they just torch it. There's a lot of good scenes where like art's kind of funny and it's like, all right, that's kind of cool. And then they just, they make you, they remind you that he's a demonic, sadistic, horrible, horrible being that is out there to ruin everyone's day. The stuff, uh, there's things in this movie I didn't know they could do. I, I mean, wow. So, I mean, overall pros. The characters, Sienna does a phenomenal job, so does Jonathan. They do a really great job of going through the PTSD and the stigma of what happens when you go through this. And they bring the 2024 social media aspect of like what happens to these people and how obsessive people are with their podcasts and stuff. They really, they really make you feel like, oh my gosh, if this was me, I would never have five minutes of, of peace. I couldn't because there's so much social media up your ass. There's so much podcasting and people asking you questions. Oh, maybe, you know, maybe you, you dreamt the whole thing up. And then you see how this has affected Sienna, how it's affected her family, how it's affected Jonathan. Jonathan's getting ready to OD on Paxil, which I'm like, I think, don't think Paxil does that right away, except for causing maybe serotonin syndrome when you take that much. But... They do a really good job of character development. They make you care about their families and the characters until, like I said, until they George R. Martin, everybody. And Gore Factor is cranked to a 10 if that's what you like. It's cranked to 11, honestly. If that's what you like, definitely go see it. You'll enjoy it. I think the playability, the rewatchability of 3 is not up there with 1 and 2. 1 and 2 feel like completed films. And it, beginning, middle, end. 3 is like, oh, and <laughs> also a cliffhanger. So you know, now you gotta wait, now you gotta wait for four, which, you know, uh, I'm sure you've already found out by now, four's got a cliffhanger in it, a little one, but now you gotta watch, sit and wait for four. I feel like the playability of three doesn't have the rewatchability of one and two, where we, one and two feel like completed stories, you can watch them every year. I don't think I need to rewatch three. I, mm -mm. Three was brutal, man. That was one of the hardest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Sound effects, the blood, the guts, uh, the acting is amazing. I mean, you really feel like those characters are right there and they're getting hurt and you, you can't do anything to, to help them. And I feel like it's been a while since a movie did that where I'm like, I wanna go help and I can't, I can't save them. And the sound effects and like how the, their pain is, you know, I was reading reading and listening to these uh, podcasts about Damian Leone and he's like, I pushed, he said he pushed every single one of those actors to their limits, made them cry, made them do whatever he could to make their pain amped up so much so where you feel what they feel and you, they do a really good job with that i'm not a big gore guy though you know and i just wanted to go see because i love horror movies i like getting scared there's a couple moments 
you know, where my heart was going through the roof and I could feel it pounding because you know something bad's gonna happen, you just don't know when. I feel like art as a character, they do a really good job with making him make you laugh and making him take the edge off the movie. They do do a good job of that, but it's pretty steady. I mean, every time you feel relaxed, you're like, I can breathe. Art goes off and does something bad again. And it's non-stop. I feel like the pacing of the movie is very good. I, the timing and the length of the movies don't bother me. I feel like everyone's ADD now because of like TikTok and there's a lot of studies saying that like social media and like TikTok and stuff, shorter videos are making everyone ADD as shit so you can't even sit down for a two and a half hour movie. I like part two that was two and a half hours. I think you get everything you need to see and you get a good story. Part three, it's only two hours and five minutes. It goes by pretty fast, but the pacing is fast. I mean, Damon Leone said he cut stuff out and he said there are some boundaries he won't push. And I thought this movie was pretty beyond any boundaries I've ever seen in a horror movie. I know there's worse horror movies out there, Grindhouse stuff, but he said that he had to put stuff back. He said that people were giving him ideas and he had ideas like, no, I won't cross that line. Which I don't know what those are and I don't want to know if there's lines he won't cross. Um, I think Damon the only must be mad at somebody. He's got to be angry at someone to like, he wants to see people get hurt and get like tortured and like be, you know, it's not like Michael, Jason, and Freddy, where it's like it's over in like 0.5 seconds. No, 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 he wants people to like feel it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if there's lines he doesn't want to cross, I don't want to know. So <laughs> I would say the watch, the rewatchability of three, I got, I saw it once and that's all. It, it is so over the top with everything. I'm good. I know a lot of people will probably rewatch this film, which is fine. I mean, do what you got to do. I just don't need to see it again because it was so, it achieved its goal. I will say that. If anything you learn from this video, part three achieves the goal of just being the most brutal, violent, gory, sadistic, mean, spirited, sadistic, sexually violent movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Yep, it wins. Even beats in violent nature by a long shot. So the movie did its goal, and I don't think I need to see it again. Pros, like I said, great acting. I love the Christmas spirit, the feeling of the 90s, and that warm and cozy feel of Christmas. Art is actually pretty funny, and sometimes he's got a lot of good mannerisms, or he's like, oh, you. You know, obviously he's not talking, but he's doing a lot of fun stuff like that. That really makes you, like, give you a breath of fresh air. I like what they did with the lore, where they actually explain stuff. So I'm like, oh, maybe that'll make me relax. Because the entire movie, I'm tensed up, like, no tomorrow. Like, the 15 kids that were to my right, they all left 10 minutes in the movie to show you the impact, how much that movie does. But I feel like with art and how ramped up this movie is and how tense I was, hearts pounding on my chest... At least explanations of the lore and who everybody is and what everything is made me like relax a little bit. Made me remind me that I was in a little bit of a movie. And then Art does those little things that kind of helps you relax until he goes and kills them too. The movie does its job. It's it's one of the hardest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. If you liked one and two, you'll like three. I liked three in the sense it carried one and two. The grindhouse feeling of one and sometimes the lack of mystery in one. Paired with the story of two and the characters you really care about but it doesn't feel like a complete movie because of the cliffhanger. And I'm good. I don't need to see three ever again. I it get its job. A, you get an A plus for doing exactly what you set out to do, which was scare me to death and put in so much gore that I can't function the next day. I think they did a good job at that. I'm not a big fan of gore and hurting kids. So if you're not, you're not gonna like this movie. And I knew that going into this, that bad things were gonna happen. I just wanted to go see it anyway. And now I need to go back to church again because, yeah, so I'm, I'm sleeping with this for a little while. Just kidding. But I, I think if you if you like the Terrifier movies, you like Darth Cloud, you'll like three. It does everything it needs to do. If you don't like gore, if you don't like things happening to kids, no animals were harmed, by the way, so that's good. Then you'll like it. If you love the soundtrack from two, there's not as much, but there is a little bit of the soundtrack from two. There's actually a song called Chrissy and the artist that did that song is on Instagram. She'll respond to all your stuff. She's really cool. Like, the tunes are awesome. That's probably one of the things that really set these movies apart that made me feel like a little bit more comfortable watching these was the synthwave retro soundtrack is so good. It made me, like, want to just listen to those over and over and over again. So overall, more positives than negatives. I It was a brutal movie. It sets the bar for independent horror, and I think it brings a lot of people back to independent horror. It kicked the newest Joker right out, right out the window. But that was Terrifier 3. I don't want to leave any spoilers for you guys. I hope you guys are doing okay. I have a lot more normal videos coming up after this. I just wanted to share that I saw Terrifier 3 and it lived up to the hype. And wow. Wow. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't. Where's the eggnog? Or the meatloaf? Meatloaf. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Take care of each other. Peace.